Welcome to the 2020 Nebraska-Iowa Kiwanis Virtual District Convention, streaming live from Lincoln, Nebraska. Today, we will honor all who are serving children in our district and around the world. Kiwanis is a global organization of volunteers dedicated to improving the world one child and one community at a time. This year, the Nebraska-Iowa District is celebrating 100 years as a district. We're proud of our accomplishments and proud of the people who so willingly give of themselves to serve this great organization and the children for which we help. It's fitting to celebrate a century of service. Sit back, relax, and enjoy information that represents the work that Kiwanis does in our district. We appreciate that you have joined us and hope that you enjoy the program today. And now, our national anthem, followed by prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Father, we ask for your blessings on this weekend's district convention. Being virtual will give it a different feel, but wonderful nonetheless. Thank you for the miracle of technology that allows us to meet even during a time of pandemic. As we celebrate what has happened, what is happening, and what will happen, help us to remember those of our Kiwanis friends who have passed away since our last convention. May their examples increase our desire to serve the children and adults of the world, one person and one community at a time. Thank you for this weekend and for all your other blessings. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Nebraska-Iowa District is reaching a great milestone, 100 years. And I'm very proud that I've been part of that history of, this, of the Nebraska-Iowa District for the last 64 years. And I think it's really important that we continue all the things that we're doing and all the community activities and youth activities that we promoted over the first hundred years. Let's get busy and start working on the next hundred years.
thanks, Dave. That was uh, wonderful. I can't imagine 64 years as a member of one club and continuing to have the enthusiasm that you have. We will have an opportunity a little bit later to hear more from Dave, and uh, I think all of you will find it uh, extremely inspiring. Thank you for joining us tonight to help the Nebraska-Iowa District celebrate 100 years of service to the children of Nebraska, Iowa, and the world. My name is Don Fritz. Uh, I'm a member of the Lincoln Nebraska South Point Club, and I'm currently serving as uh, Vice Governor of the Nebraska-Iowa District. In these difficult times of the coronavirus, um, I have been amazed and excited at the work that our clubs are continuing to do to serve the children and the communities in Nebraska and Iowa. It's exciting. It's tremendously exciting for me. But tonight, I want to go along with all of you and celebrate 100 years of service from the Nebraska-Iowa District and look forward to tomorrow as we begin planning the next 100 years. One of the things that, that I've always liked about Kiwanis is that we have a clear mission, and you've actually heard it stated a number of times already uh, in, in the introduction. And it's a mission that all of us really have memorized, either verbatim or through our actions. And it's simply like this. Kiwanians are a group of dedicated volunteers improving the world one child and one community at a time. Well, a few years ago, Qantas International challenged us to be a bit more specific in terms of what does it mean to improve the world? And they gave us a vision statement, and I want to just paraphrase what that vision statement is because it is so powerful and it challenges us for the next 100 years. The vision statement from Qantas International is this, that we as Kiwanians, we serve the world that, so that one day all children wake up in communities that believe in them, help them thrive, and support them to be successful. The implications of that statement, just that simply every child wakes up in a community that believes in them, is extremely relevant today, and it will continue to be relevant in our future. And as we begin to look at our past 100 years, we can look at how we've impacted our children and our communities, and we now look forward to the next 100 years. You know, as I was preparing for tonight, being the young guy that I am, I cannot even conceptualize what 100 years means. I can't begin to think about how many children have we impacted in the past 100 years. I can't fathom that. How many adults, young adults, old adults, communities have we impacted in the last 100 years? How much, how much money have we donated? How many hours have we given to the, to the, the children and adults and communities of Nebraska, Iowa. But you know what? We not only serve Nebraska and Iowa, we serve the world. I've only been a Kiwanian for approximately 25 years. And in my short tenure, Kiwanians, in partnership with UNICEF, have basically eradicated the iodine deficiency problem that we had in the world. And we have now conquered neonatal tetanus in over 50 countries. And we're continuing that process. So we're continuing to serve not only locally, but globally as well. Over the next hour, we're going to have an opportunity to, to uh, listen to comments from our district governor, Lenora Hanna. We're also going to have comments from the Qantas International President and President-designee. We also will have a, a, a wonderful video from Dick Christian, and you're going to be so inspired by his discussions. We're going to play a little trivia, and we're going to have an opportunity to look back at 100 years of service in Nebraska, Iowa. 
Some of you will remember some of those pictures and some of us will not. So tonight, uh, I want you to sit back. I want you to enjoy the past. I want you to reflect a little bit on what we have done, celebrate on what we have done, but get ready for tomorrow when we begin to plan for the next 100 years because we have more work to do. Children need Kiwanians. To start the evening off, it's my pleasure to introduce our current governor, Lenora Hanna of the Nebraska-Iowa District. You know, I haven't known Lenora for a long time, but I've, I've known her for a little bit, and I, I have a few comments I want to make. Uh, you know, Lenora uh, started actually assisting in Kiwanis, in Kiwanis before she was an official member. Back in 1977, Lenora started helping her husband, Milford Hanna, who's a past governor, doing activities. And we didn't let her join until 1993. But she joined in 1993 and has been in a leadership role ever since then. She has been active with the Circle K, which is our college uh, service leadership program. Uh, she has been a lieutenant governor. But probably what she would tell you is the highlight is she has been program coordinator for the Lemonade Project. In 2010, Milford and Lenora Hanna were invited by Qantas International to uh, make a site visit in the Philippines and they were able to see firsthand children being born with uh, tetanus. And uh, if you want to ignite some passion in Lenora, just bring up that topic and ask her to tell you a story. And uh, you'll get a number of stories because Lenora is passionate about helping children wherever they may be and whatever the issues might be. It's no accident that her theme this year has been action, not just words. So it's my pleasure to introduce the governor of Nebraska, Iowa District, Lenora Hanna. Yay. Thank you, Don. Well, I officially opened the 2020 virtual district convention. I bring it to order. Well, good evening and welcome to our district's very first virtual convention. Thank you so much for joining us. We are so looking forward to sharing two awesome days of convention with you. Our district's 2019-20 international trustee who joins us tonight is from Melbourne, Australia. So glad you could be with us this evening, Tony. Tonight is all about celebrating 100 years as a district. And to get as that celebration started, I'd like to recognize the first clubs that were formed, plus share some history about our district. We had three clubs charter in 1919 before we became a district. Omaha Inc., Lincoln Center, and Des Moines Downtown. Another 11 were chartered, chartered during 1920. Cedar Rapids, Council Bluffs Downtown, Fremont, Fort Dodge, Grand Island, Hastings, Kearney, Mason City, Ottumwa, Sioux City, and Waterloo. Congratulations to these clubs for reaching such a milestone. On January 6, 1920, a at a district, uh, district organizational meeting held in Des Moines, our district was formed and was named the Western Iowa District. On May 24, 1922, our district was then renamed Nebraska Iowa District. During 1920-21, there were 21 clubs formed under our first governor, A.R. Edmison. He was from Lincoln. During the next several years, the district continued to grow. 11 clubs in 1922, 16 in 1923. And by our 10th year, we had added a total of 55 clubs, in addition to the three that were formed in 1919. Our third governor, 
Raymond Crossman from Omaha was considered Nebraska, Iowa's original Mr. Kwanian. He went on to be an international trustee, and in 1924, he chaired a committee that wrote the six objects of Kiwanis, which have never been changed. Ray was elected Kiwanis International President in 1930. It was another 41 years until our district was honored with another international president, Wes Bartlett from Algona. We have added two more to the list from Nebraska, Iowa, Steve Siemens from Des Moines in 2005-06 and Jane Erickson from Bellevue in 2016-17. To honor Mr. Craftsman during our centennial year, the Nebraska-Iowa Foundation is offering the Raymond M. Craftsman District Centennial Fellowship Medallion. These are available for a donation of $500 to the foundation through September 30th, 2021. The form can be found on our Nebraska-Iowa website. The district began with only one division in 1920, and by 1924, it had grown to six. The district has seen many divisional changes, and we currently have 24, 16 in Iowa and eight in Nebraska. The Kiwanis family expanded in 1925 when Key Club was formed for high school students. Circle K for college students followed, 22 years later in 1947. The family continued to grow in 1975 when Builders Club for Middle School was formed and also the first Golden K was established. In 1987, Action Club for Adults with Disabilities began and finally in 1999, Kiwanis added our youngest family members, K-Kids. As you know, Kiwanis was a men's only organization for 72 years. 1987 brought big changes at the International Convention in Washington, D.C. when women were voted to become members. We've now had two women international presidents, the second one being Jane Erickson from Bellevue, Nebraska. We have had six women in our district become governor and four of their husbands also were governor. We currently have 163 clubs and 4,851 members and have added 385 members throughout the district this year. The plan for 2019-20 was to build three new clubs. At this time, we are hoping to add one club, Missouri Valley. Thanks to Lieutenant Governor Larry Buss for his dedication and work to see this happen. I have found the history of our district to be very interesting, and I'm very honored to be the Nebraska-Iowa governor during our 100th year. We have so much to celebrate and to be proud of as one of the original 29 districts to be formed. Even during a pandemic, Many clubs have continued to meet virtually, hold fundraisers, continue service projects, and yes, be successful bringing new members in to the best service organization. Thank you for joining us this evening, and I hope you will enjoy celebrating with us 100 years of Nebraska-Iowa Kiwanis. Now I'd like to share with you Danielle Vigneron's letter. He is our Qantas International President. To the Nebraska-Iowa District, congratulations on your 100th anniversary. Though your annual gathering will be virtual rather than in person this year, you have reason to celebrate your century of service Indeed, and it is indeed worth observing. I know that attentive preparation and leadership have contributed to the success of your district over the years. Your teamwork and longevity illustrate my motto, res non verba, actions, not only words. Each district plays a role 
in making Kiwanis the respected organization it is. I want Kiwanis to evolve with the times and become more ambitious. The service you provide to children and your community plays a big part. Membership growth is the key to, future, to our future. As you look forward to the years ahead, expand your impact by inviting new friends and neighbors to join Kiwanis. Membership retention also is very important. We want all Kiwanians to feel engaged and motivated. Enjoy your special anniversary. Be safe and thank you for your dedication to Kiwanis. Your friend in Kiwanis, Danielle Vigneron, 2019-20 President, Kiwanis International. I would now like to uh, take the opportunity to introduce uh, Kiwanis International President Designate Art Riley. He has a message for our district this evening. Thank you very much, Governor-elect Kurt. It's an honor and a pleasure to be with you. It's a pleasure to bring you greetings from the International Board on behalf of all the board and all of the officers of Kiwanis International. I'd like to really extend my personal congratulations for 100 years of great service to the Nebraska-Iowa children. 100 years of service is certainly something to be recognized. It is something to celebrate. And as I've been actually uh, outlined already this evening, it's time now to plan for the next 100 years. Right now, the comments from Governor Lenora, I th congratulate her on her year. And the comments from Vice Governor Don are certainly apropos. And I ask you to heed and listen to your leaders in the Nebraska-Iowa district because they have a great vision for the next 100 years of Nebraska-Iowa. I would like to thank each of you for being a Kiwanian. Thank those lieutenant governors who have stepped up to serve not only in 1920, but in 2021. Right now, we are beginning a transformation of Kiwanis. It is going to bring new excitement, a new energy level to Kiwanis. And Governor Lack Kurt is part of that team, and I invite each one of you to become a part of the 2021 team. Right now, as an example of that uh, inspiration and that uh, energy, right now we have about 80 Kiwanians working on various committees at the international level to improve Kiwanis, to grow Kiwanis, and many other aspects, which I'm going to go, go, go into in a minute. But right now, you can be a part of that 2021 team. And the 2021 team is going to be focused on a couple of different areas. First of all, it's going to be focused on growth. Qantas International is a member-based organization, and membership will always be, have to be number one priority, opening new clubs. But we're going to add some different twists to it as we go through. We've got recommendations underway of how to grow Qantas in many different ways. You're familiar with club openings. You're familiar with club coaching. We're going to have new opportunities for club coaches and new trainings to help those coaches to become better Kiwanians and help guide Kiwanis clubs throughout every district. We're going to have focus clubs. We're looking at ways we can develop clubs focused on a particular service project or a service entity. The first ones of those that are emerging are the Kiwanis clubs we build around what we call orphan key clubs, where Kiwanians roll up their sleeves and say, we're going to mentor these young people. Also, we're going to have a greater emphasis on diversity. How can we increase the number of women in leadership roles? How can we grow the number of women in Kiwanis? And how can we attract people from underserved parts of our community that we serve? Service is going to be the second component. We have to be able to grow service because we all know that Kiwanis service is what attracts people to Kiwanis. Signature service projects that are emerging are outstanding, and we're going to continue to grow the signature service program. We have to make sure that service is relevant. We have to examine all of our service projects to make sure they're delivering the needs of the community. And we have to make sure that the service we provide not only sparks the interest of our members, but gains recognition from the community. Leadership development is going to be another priority coming for Kiwanis. We have identified that the leadership development is the number one item past membership that we need to develop. 
That's not only adult leadership, but also our youth leadership. Right now, we have Kiwanians working on how we can develop better youth leadership programs, as well as how can we make leadership development a benefit of Kiwanis membership. The other major emphasis we're working on is key, what we call Key Club 2.0. Key Club has been around since the mid-20s, but we have to make sure that we're making sure the Key Club is relevant throughout our history, in, in now and into the future. The key clubbers that we have are our golden uh, crown, and we have to make sure that we provide mentoring opportunities, leadership opportunities for the brightest of these youth, which are the brightest of the youth in our country. So we have a lot of things to do in, this, in the upcoming year of Kiwanis, but most of these will come about through a lot of teamwork and a lot of succession planning. At the international level, President Polly, President Daniel, myself, Vice and Vice uh, President Peter have been working hard to make sure that we have continuity at the international level. And I urge you at the district level to work the same and at your divisional levels and your club levels. Make sure the succession planning things are in place and you have a way to develop new leaders in Kiwanis. I'd just like to take another opportunity to congratulate you on 100 years of service. And I hope to be with you for part of the day tomorrow. I'm going to have to bow out for the rest of this evening because I have other appearances in the Philippines and other places to do this evening. So uh, I proudly congratulate you on a great virtual convention, a great kickoff, and I look forward to a great weekend. And congratulations again on your 100th anniversary from all of your Kiwanis friends. Thank you and have a great evening. Tonight, we want to congratulate these 15 Kiwanians who have been members for 60 plus years. Imagine the changes they've seen during their service years. Thank you for your dedication and love of this great organization. Also in our convention program, please check out in, in that booklet, a list of members that have been in Qantas 50 plus years. Congratulations to all these people. Good evening, welcome. As we celebrate the history of Nebraska, Iowa, Kiwanis District, uh, we stopped to think about some things that we could highlight. Our district administrator, Lisa, had been in contact with an individual who is a member of the Fremont, Nebraska Kiwanis Club. Mr. Dave Christensen has been a member of the Fremont Kiwanis Club for 64 consecutive years. We had the opportunity to meet with Dave a couple weeks ago and videotape an interview with him. Uh, he put a very interesting perspective on the early days of his life with Kiwanis and the early days of Kiwanis. So sit back and for the next number of minutes, uh, enjoy listening to Mr. Dave Christensen, a 64 year member of Remont. The Iowa District is reaching a great milestone, 100 years. And I'm very proud that I've been part of that history of, this, of the Nebraska Iowa District for the last 64 years. Been a member of the Fremont Qantas Club since 1956, and it's certainly been a, a, quite, a quite a trip and a, something I've been very proud of. And, and to say that I've been a member of the Fremont Kiwanis Club. It's a very uh, good club. They've done a lot of things for Fremont, for youth and for community activities. My father was a member of the Kiwanis Club. He wasn't one of the charter members, but very early on he was became member of the club and was president uh, 
in, I think, in 1928 at the age of 34. And just coincidentally, when I became president of the club, I happened to be 34 years of age. My Qantas experience started quite a while before I actually joined the club. Uh, back when I was 10 or 11 years old, the postage, uh, the U.S. Postal Service decided that they needed a raise in their fees and mailing of the Kiwanis Buzz was going to go from one and a half cents to three cents. And uh, in their ultimate decision that they made, they thought maybe we could find some young guy that uh, we can <laughs> maybe take advantage of. But anyway, uh, anyway, I became the deliverer of the Qantas Buzz uh, down in the downtown area and, and within uh, the confines of Fremont. I had about 70 bulletins to uh, deliver and they, I got two cents. So the Qantas Club saved 70 cents a week. Uh, I got paid about every two or three months and that was a pretty good sum of money, so I felt like I really had a big job. Anyway, it was a time that I got to meet many of the members of the Kiwanis Club at that time and got to know them going into their offices and whatnot. That was a great experience, but in 1956 when I joined, the Fremont Club at that time uh, had, for many years, had, had a limitation of the number of members. I think it was around 90 members because if they would, again, uh, from a monetary standpoint, if they went over 90, they get into another category for the international for dues payment. So they wanted to keep it uh, under 90 and they always had a waiting list. Uh, there was a very active member in the club at the time that I joined uh, and he decided that they wanted to build the club even beyond that. Uh, even before that also, uh, there was a limitation on the members and what their business was. They didn't want more than one lumber dealer, they didn't want more than uh, one dentist or, and whatnot all down the line. And uh, of course, at that time, women were not even considered as being potential members. But anyway, the year that I joined, uh, there were quite a number of other uh, members that, that joined. I remember, that. I think there was at least five of us that came in at one time. So that was my first experience with, with Kiwanis. Uh, there, at that time, we were really active in uh, YMCA uh, and youth activities. Uh, they, there was a club called the Rinky Dinks, which was established by the Kiwanis Club. Uh, earlier, much earlier than that, I think it had been going for many, many years the time I joined. Uh, and they, were, they sponsored that club for, for many years. As, uh, as time went by, uh, another a big activity that the Qantas Club got into, they always seemed like sometimes we get into more than uh, we can chew at times. But <clears throat> there was a uh, youth camp on the big island here next to Fremont called Camp Christian. And it was, belonged to the Christian church. And, but the camp has, was failing and the church wanted to get rid of it. So here we come, here comes the Kiwanis Club. They said this would be a great project to do. So we did buy Camp Christian. Uh, at that time, uh, there was an active member that really worked, his name was Don Beach. Uh, I'd say he's a very similar to our current president, Don Cunningham. Uh, he just felt that uh, the club ought to be doing something every minute, every day, of, uh, every week. But anyway, he was the uh, director of that camp. Unfortunately, Don, about a year later, died of a sudden, sudden heart attack. And I happened to be the vice chairman of his committee. So you know what happened there. I took charge of Camp Kiwanis uh, and we kept that going for about another two, two and a half years uh, before that job really just got too big for me and then too big for the club. And uh, that time I think we sold it back to the YMCA. Um, 
Some of the highlights uh, of my experience, I look back, probably one of the biggest highlights that I remember was the year I became president and was able to go to the International Convention in New York City. Uh, that was really a great experience, an experience for my wife, a, a life experience for my wife. One of the speakers, uh, motivational speakers uh, at, at the International Convention at that time was a young man by the name of Norman Vincent Peel. And over the years, I think my wife collected every bit of his books or periodicals, whatever he had. She became a big fan of him and I also. And uh, that was a probably uh, one of the most impressionable times of my life. I've been extremely proud of this club. I, I can't imagine uh, there's probably, there's no uh, competition as such, but I would just venture to guess that Fremont Kiwanis Club has done more for youth activities and community activities than any other service club in Fremont. And most recently, uh, through our leadership, we've done many things. Uh, the last uh, that I think of right now is not completed yet is the uh, playground at our splash station in Fremont, which I believe uh, it's in excess of $200,000 that uh, I think Kwanzaa Club is almost totally responsible in raising that. Another thing uh, that I'm very proud of uh, and I was unaware of that, but uh, I guess the reason that I'm here, that I've <laughs> been found out to be the longest consecutive uh, or continuous member of, the, of a Kiwanis Club uh, <laughs> that's alive, I guess, at this point in the Nebraska-Iowa district. Uh, that's, I don't know if that's a particular uh, honor, but it, I'm certainly glad to be be at that point and be healthy and whatnot and I guess nobody's going to beat me as long as I continue to pay my dues every every year. I think it's really important that we continue all the things that we're doing and all the community activities and youth activities that we promoted over the first hundred years. Let's get busy and start working on the next hundred years. Thank you, Dave, for sharing your past 64 years in Qantas with us. And keep up the good work and keep paying your dues. What an honor to have the International Key Club President be from the Nebraska-Iowa District. What is even more awesome, this is the second International Key Club President in a row from our district. I would like to introduce now Alex Drehas from Lynn Mar High School in Marion, Iowa. Alex? Hello, Nebraska Iowa Kiwanians. I'm Alex Drehas, a rising senior from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and as of about four weeks ago, the new Key Club International President. I wanted to thank you for tuning in and for your continued dedication to this organization. I often get the question, what is Kiko International doing around the world? And I thought I would touch on that aspect of things today with you. First and foremost, we're continuing to grow. We're working with the Philippines, Taiwan, Western Canada, and other areas with a strong Qantas presence to create new clubs and grow membership. We're also working with our partners on big projects. We're working with the Thirst Project to end the global water crisis in Swaziland and other nearby countries, and we're working with the Eliminate Project to end maternal and neonatal tetanus for mothers across the world. Yet, ultimately, we're serving our homes, schools, and communities. It's a weird situation that we're in right now, especially with COVID-19. It is an unexpected surprise of my term, to say the least, and it's not something any of us thought we would encounter a few months ago. There are certainly challenges. I probably won't get to see my international board members for most of the year, 
students might not be going back to school and Kiko International might see a drop in membership. There are new barriers. Yet, there's also benefits to this pandemic, it's, and it's important to realize that. We are now looking at modernizing Kiko International through virtual platforms and virtual opportunities, which is ultimately eliminating barriers for lots of students who didn't have access to a club or have access to Kiko International opportunities. There's also a personal growth component, especially on the international board. It is teaching us all dedication, adaptability, flexibility, and strategic thinking uh, as we continue our journey throughout life. So there are benefits to this pandemic, and I think it's really important to highlight that. But even with this pandemic, I still have a big vision for Key Club International, and it comes down to two things, support and growth. For support, it ultimately is just supporting our districts, clubs, members, and other Kiwanis family branches. And that's a big thing of what I'm trying to do this year. And then there's growth. And that's, yes, growing our organization in numbers, but also growing programs, growing partners, growing opportunities for members, growing Key Club International as a whole. That is a big vision of mine. Now, there's a lot I hope to accomplish this year. And I'm hoping we can do it even with this pandemic. We are looking at rebranding Key Club International to make it more appealing to students and to uh, kind of change things up for a little bit. Uh, we're also looking at new service partners, but also changing how we work with our old ones to best give members uh, the resources and opportunities that they deserve. We're looking at a service directory and increasing the amount of service projects we have in our directory to give members an easier way to access service project ideas. We are looking at growing in countries that we have never chartered clubs before, and we're looking at continuing to eliminate barriers for members through online trainings, online events, and waivers that will help those in financial need. It will be an interesting year, but I am excited and I am ready for the challenges to come. If you ever have any questions or thoughts, please reach out to me. I would love to connect. But again, thank you for tuning in and thank you for everything that you do as Kwanians. Thank you, Alex. Isn't it fun to see our future? Alex will be uh, leading us in a, in a great direction. I wanna take just a minute to thank the sponsors uh, for our virtual conference. When the planning committee for our annual conference had to post or cancel the, the conference because of the coronavirus. We knew we wanted to do something special and uh, we are doing that tonight. It's our first, our first attempt at our virtual conference and I hope that you're enjoying the process. But I specifically want, to, want you to take a look at the sponsors that are on your screen right now and thank them because they, because of their support, it has allowed us to provide this at no cost to all the members of the Nebraska-Iowa district. As you know, there were no registration fees and uh, we wanna thank all of the sponsors. We knew that we needed to raise a little money and we put out a, a call and uh, as Kiwanians, you responded. And uh, we have been able to support this conference by, the gener by your generosity. So I thank you very much. And I encourage you, if you see a sponsor listed up there and you see them in person, thank them for being a sponsor of our virtual conference. Thanks so much. Okay, now for some fun. Tonight we will have uh, John Hay, who is a member of the Lincoln Northeast uh, Qantas Club, uh, bring us some trivia. And John is a 16 year, year member of Kiwanis. He was a member in Norfolk, uh, Nebraska before coming to Lincoln. But he is also the son of one of our current Lieutenant Governors, Paul Hay from Beatrice. Thank you, John, for helping us celebrate with some trivia tonight. Well, I'm, I'm uh, pleased to be here. I'm really glad that I'm doing the fun part. That means everything that was done before wasn't fun, right? Okay, we're in good shape then, and that's what I was thinking. 
No, no, it's been, it's been good. Uh, we're we're going to do a little trivia today, and, and I want all of you out, out there watching this to, to join in a little bit. And the way we're going to do that is that you see you have a chat box um, on your screen there, and you can click chat. But when you use the chat, you want to make sure that you're chatting to all panelists and attendees so that it, it's uh, all everybody can see it, including myself. And so when I bring up a question, you go ahead and type the, the best guess uh, for that answer right in the chat box. And uh, if I see a good answer, maybe I'll call it out. And so we're gonna, we're gonna do our best, uh, do best with that. So I've got uh, a number of categories today and we're gonna try to keep this fairly short. I wanna give a, uh, at least a shout out to my old club, the, the Norfolk Morning Qantas Club, because that was the Qantas Club where we st I started doing trivia with. And, and uh, uh, they did trivia as their normal meetings, and it was so much fun that when I became the president of the Lincoln Northeast Club, I brought that as a tradition to that club, and it has uh, remained a tradition for a number of years where we do trivia at each of our meetings. And so I've kind of been known for that a little bit. Um, I'm also known for some questions that are maybe a little off the wall, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I've got three categories today. We've got history, Nebraska, Iowa, and we've got service, and we'll go ahead and we're going to just jump right in here. So for our first one of history is, which city was the first Kiwanis Club formed in in 1915? Now, Lenora said some of these answers earlier, so we really are checking to see if you're listening. And I'm seeing a lot of person, people jump up with the right answer real quick. I see uh, Robert from Marshall and uh, Randy G with Detroit. I see one wrong answer there, sorry, Bill, uh, with Chicago. But... Uh, um, so we're, we got a lot of people answering Detroit, and so we're just gonna we're just gonna say that that's that's correct. It was Detroit, Michigan, is where that started, and so um, so they the first club was was in Detroit, Michigan, and uh, and that was was a hundred years ago, and we're so proud that that group was able to do that. Now, here's where my trivia mind goes into effect. I said, well, now we have this simple question that was answered Detroit. Now you have a little harder question, which is created in 1866 by a pharmacist. This is known as the oldest soda in America. Now this is a Detroit question because that pharmacist was in Detroit. So let's see what we got here. We have Robert saying Coca-Cola. We have Jim saying Coke. We have some Dr. Pepper um, coming up. Um, we have Steve with Coca-Cola. I haven't seen a right answer yet, you know. Anybody have any guesses from the room? This is a true a Michigan original, people. Think about Michigan. Who here has been to Michigan and drank the original Michigan soda? The answer is Verner's. The answer is Verner's. And because the people in the room are a little disappointed, I did bring Lenora a Verner's, um, so you can try it. And, and see what you, now what you need to do when you open a Verner's, if you're, if you're a good true Michigan, you open it and then you give it a nice smell. And, uh, and that's because it really uh, is strong ginger and tickles your nose. It's really quite good. This is the taste of my childhood um, because going to my grandmother's house in northern Michigan, this is what we always had. And so um, you can get it around the nation now, but give Verner's a try. All right. Now. We're going to get a little, uh, Kiwanis is really a, a pin culture, right? And, and I wear my, I got my three pins on today. And uh, the, the, the real correct way to wear a pin is to tilt that pin at a 15 degree angle. But the, the question is why? Is it in honor of the first year, 1915? I said 1920 earlier. Actually, 1915 was the first year um, of Kiwanis. Is it aesthetically pleasing? Um, is it to remind us that we're all imperfect? Easy, I have easier to read. Good, good. It gets noticed. That's good. It's aesthetically pleasing. Good, 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 good guesses. Good guesses. First year. So, so uh, uh, Lon said the first year. Shirley says because we're imperfect. I do think we're all imperfect. Um, now, we're a long ways away from the podium today, so I wanted to, to bring this up. The answer is 
uh, because it was the first year of the founding of Kiwanis. And I did make Lenora a pin because this is a pin culture. We got to be wearing our pins. And this one is purposely set at a 15 degree angle. So it'll hang appropriately when you wear it. So, so you can put that on and, and uh, she's got it. And it, it, it is crooked. It's the other crooked. So it's maybe it's negative crooked. 15. Does that work? <laughs> yeah. You're imperfect, Lenora. It's okay. So, all right. So here we, we go, we're, we're, we're still in Kiwanis history. We got a little bit of history from Lenora earlier. Let's go a little bit, a little bit deeper, maybe more complex, but uh, before Kiwanis was the name of the organization, the organization was called what? The Detroit Builders, the United Businesses for Detroit, the Supreme Lodge Benevolent Order of Brothers, or the Order of the Moose. Let's see what we've got. We've got, now Lon is, is, is right on here. He says it's the Bobs. And uh, William says Supreme Lodge. And we have the Brothers Bob. I like that one. That's a good one from Paul. So uh, United Businesses for Detroit is a guest from Tracy. Good guest, Tracy. Um, so United, so this is, this is a little bit of, you know, maybe this was the time in 1915, but the answer is it was the benevolent order. So just think, just think that today we could be the SL Bob serving the children of the world. Now, Lenora, I don't want to, I don't want to leave you out. I, I did think it's important if we're going to have the SL Bob, I do have an SL Bob's International uh, pin for you. <laughs> now, you. this one is SL Bob's, Lenora, mm -hmm. because it shouldn't be Bob. It should be the Supreme Lodge Benevolent Order of Brothers and Sisters. Good. Very deal. important that we are inclusive. Good. So it's the SL Bob's. <laughs> so. All right, we're going to switch categories here and do a couple um, a little more closer to home, um, Nebraska, Iowa questions. In Nebraska, Iowa district, the first club was formed in Omaha. Where was the second club? So we heard that the, that the first club was, uh, was Omaha. And let's see what we're, what we're hearing from people. We have a Des Moines. We have a Lincoln. We have a Lincoln. We have a Des Moines. Was it Des Moines, Lincoln, Council Bluffs, or Iowa City? So it looks like we're kind of stuck between Des Moines and Lincoln. We're not quite sure. We're not giving the others any love. But, uh, but that's okay uh, because uh, it is either Des Moines or Lincoln. We'll narrow it down to those two. Um, and the answer is that number two was Lincoln and number three was Des Moines. So... I'm still trying to, to get my head around the fact that, that Omaha and Lincoln were the first two clubs, and yet we were still the Western Iowa district. I don't understand that. I, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But, you know, maybe it was a popular vote and Iowa had more votes because they have more people. But uh, um, so now we know that Lincoln was number two, so let's have a question about Lincoln. Okay? Let's have a question about Lincoln. And when I say Lincoln, I'm thinking Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln is the first president born west of the Mississippi, enshrined in the, wet, in the Wrestling Hall of Fame, or known for his excellent singing voice. What do you think? I have Robert Marshall says born west of the Mississippi. I have uh, Randy enshrined in the, in the Wrestling Hall of Fame. Steve with born on the, on the Mississippi. Uh, Byron with a wrestler, Paul with West, I mean, born west of Mississippi, John with singing voice. So really, we're, we're not quite sure about this one. We're kind of all over the board, which is okay. That actually makes me feel good. When you're guessing, I'm feeling good, okay? So we're guessing. The answer is, is that, uh, President Abraham Lincoln is enshrined in the Wrestling Hall of Fame. And when I say wrestling, what I'm talking about is, is kind of real, real wrestling, you know, Olympic style wrestling. So if you go down to, to uh, Stillwater, Oklahoma, to the Wrestling Hall of Fame, this picture on the left-hand side is on the wall. And Abraham Lincoln was quite a wrestler. They didn't have uh, it as an official sport at that time, but he loved challenging people to this, uh, to wrestling matches, and thus he is enshrined. 
So the picture on the right is kind of a, a picture that's been floating around. It's a meme that's going around the internet and people kind of like it. Obviously, it's a made up image. But I thought, you know, how good would Lenora look with a wrestling belt? So I got Lenora a wrestling belt. Oh, my goodness. There you go. So. And, and that, that, that's, a, that's a, uh, a nice Kiwanis wrestling belt, so she can, she can take that and wear that around and, mm. and be proud of, uh, of Kiwanis. Just be happy it's not an SL, a Slabob uh, wrestling belt, you know, so. All right. All right, now, were you paying attention? How many international presidents have come from the Nebraska, Iowa district? One, two, three, or four? I'm seeing some answers of two out there and four and two and four. So Jim and Arlen and Nancy say four. Dennis says two. John says two. All right, Lenora, she listed them all. How many are there? Four. Now, without looking at your notes, Lenora, name them. All right, can Lenore name them? Yes, she can. And they are Ray Crossman from Omaha, Wes Bartlett from Algona, Steve Siemens from Des Moines, and Jane Erickson from Bellevue. So those are our four international presidents from our district, and we're very proud that they were able to serve. So, okay. So now this is, this is a truly guess question, you know, unless you really are studying up on our district. So let's see some numbers. How many clubs are in the Nebraska, Iowa district? I have uh, 144, 165, 163. We're, we're really in a kind of a ballpark here. So we maybe have some people that are studied up, 200 clubs plus or minus. And so we're playing the, Randy's really playing the curve here. We're just going to guess a range, you know. Um, John is at 360, so, so uh, on the higher end so far. Jim says 163, Dennis says 146. So we've got kind of a range here from about 144 to 360. Well, I can tell you, that's right. It's, it's in that range. The answer is there's 163, and they stretch out from as far west as Ogallala, Nebraska, to as far east as Iowa City, and, uh, and north and south quite a ways as well. So that, that's quite a range, and um, we take up most of, most of those two states uh, with our clubs, and we're really proud to, uh, to have the, all those clubs, 163 clubs. Let's change over and just do our last section here on service. Americans volunteer approximately how many hours each year? What do you think? 3.6 billion hours, 4.5 billion, 5.8 billion, or 6.9 billion? That's a lot of hours. So I've, had, I've got a guess of kind of all of them, 4.5 from Paul, and, and John's guessing 6.9, and Byron's guessing 5.8. And William's guessing 6.9. The answer is it's 6.9 billion hours, and you are part of that. That's worth, they estimate, $167 billion uh, in hours. That's 29 hours per adult per year. And I know that some of the people listening here have exceeded that 29 hours by a lot. And I would challenge you, if you don't get to that, those hours, Get there and beyond because obviously Kiwanis and Kiwanis volunteers are, are part of who are skewing that average with their number of hours. There's a lot of hours being volunteered in this organization. We're really proud of that. So, so keep it up. We're finishing up here. I think this might be our last question is uh, which is not a Kiwanis service leadership program? Is it Kiwanis Kids, K Kids, Builders Club, Key Club, Circle K, Circle, or the K Club International, Circle K, or the Action Club. Now, I, I, it doesn't look like I've fooled some of you. Some of you are getting the answer. So Jim says Builders is not. 
I'm sorry, John, uh, I'm sorry, but it, Jim, but it is. So that's not the, the right answer. Uh, but most of you got that right. And it is the, the, the correct answer, meaning it's the wrong answer is K Club International is not one of our service leadership clubs. Our service leadership clubs are, our, are mostly youth oriented clubs, but are clubs that we sponsor to try to extend that service to new and different groups from elementary school, middle school, high school, college, and, and uh, also some adults in the action club uh, with people with, uh, with other abilities. And so we're really happy to, to uh, sponsor those clubs. And because um, Kiwanis is such a, a uh, pin oriented culture, I brought my pin and uh, my medallion here and medallions are a big part as well. So, so you get medallions. I brought some medallions for Lenora. And so Lenora, come on up. I have a medallion for K kids. I have a medallion for Action Club. Getting heavier. And these, these, are, these are very heavy. They're made of foam board. And, and uh, one for Builders Club and Key Club and one for Circle K. And Lenora, we thank you so much for your service and please wear all of your medallions and your mm. belt, wear them proudly because you really are making a difference to all of those organizations and we really appreciate it. That's the end today. Thank you so much for all of your, uh, of, of your participation and for letting me help today. And she's fixing my medallion. Thank you. Thank very you, good. John. Thank You're you welcome. very much. Wow, that was great. That was fun playing along. And I hope you all had fun playing along with that too. That was, that was fantastic. So let's move to something else now that I have a great, great honor to, to introduce because we've got a very special video lined up here next. Why is it special? Well, this is 100 years. We're celebrating tonight. We're celebrating our district we're celebrating our members. We're celebrating our service in communities all across this great Nebraska, Iowa district. Just think, 100 years, a century of service. Now let's take a look back. Nineteen twenty was a unique time in history when women gained the right to vote and the League of Nations was formed. These events changed the world, but so did the creation of a men's group that originally had the title of Benevolent Order of Brothers or Bob. Later the name would be changed to Kiwanis. Joseph Prance became the first Kiwanis member on January 7, 1915 and a charter was issued on January 21 of that same year. Prance resided in Detroit, Michigan, and thus the Detroit Kiwanis Club became the first Kiwanis Club to exist. By 1916, 36 Kiwanis Clubs dotted the United States map, including Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Indiana, Wisconsin, Kentucky, and Massachusetts. That same year, the first Kiwanis Convention was held in Cleveland, where the first Constitution was approved. By 1917, the idea of service to children was taking shape. The Winnipeg Manitoba Kiwanis approved a project by which orphans of war victims were given a Christmas present. Three clubs, including Omaha, Lincoln, and Des Moines, were formed in 1919. It was 1920 when the district was organized as the Western Iowa District. Other clubs, including Grand Island, Fort Dodge, Cedar Rapids, Waterloo, Kearney, Mason City, Sioux City, Fremont, Hastings, Council Bluffs Downtown, 
Anatoma chartered that first year. On May 29, 1922, the official district name became Nebraska, Iowa. A.R. Edmiston of Lincoln, Nebraska, was elected the first governor, who served in 1920-21. Other clubs followed by creating projects that provide assistance and funds to people in need. By 1919, the organization had support of transitioning the original motto of We Trade to We Serve. However, by 1920, the motto of We Build was officially agreed upon and approved by the 1920 convention delegates. In 1924, Ray Crossman of Omaha, the third district governor of Nebraska, Iowa, chaired a committee that wrote the six permanent objects of Kiwanis International. To date, these objects remain firm and unchanged and have guided the organization for over 100 years. After several years of serving as a trustee, he was elected international treasurer and in 1930 elected as the first Kiwanis International President from the Nebraska-Iowa District. After his service at the international level, he went on to serve as President of the Omaha Kiwanis Club. Our district's mission has changed over the years to meet the needs of the children in our communities. Kiwanis International's defining statement has also changed to reflect those changing needs. Today, we recognize the words, Kiwanis is a global organization of volunteers dedicated to improving the world one child and one community at a time. It is this statement that provides the foundation for our clubs and servant leaders to make Kiwanis a well-recognized service organization for children. To serve the needs of children through the early days, many clubs develop projects to benefit those in need. Projects have included bike safety, apple sellers, tree planting, support of camps, and a Boy Scout wheelchair brigade. Other projects included Kiwanis Carpenters, Kitty's Traffic Safety Fund, Farm Family Awards, and those fun talent groups.
By 1973, Wes Bartlett of Algona was elected as the second person from Nebraska, Iowa to serve as international president. Prior to his election to this office, Wes had served on many Kiwanis International Committees and two terms as a Kiwanis International Trustee. Bartlett supported the Kiwanis International Foundation's Operation Drug Alert beginning in 1969-70, and he added Project Environment as a major emphasis program during his service as international president. In 1936, Circle K appeared first as a fraternity that struggled over the years for its identity and support by all of Kiwanis International leaders. Wes Bartlett believed in Circle K, and during his presidency, a new format was established and new constitutional provisions were adopted for the governing of Circle K. You have an understanding of where Kiwanis comes from. You have an understanding that Kiwanis was founded on the basis that we wanted to make better communities because Kiwanis is there. Wes was a leader emphasizing relevance and identification with cooperation among all segments of society and its problems. He was a common person with a big heart, realizing, we will not only write another chapter in the history of Kiwanis service, but will also begin the all-important task of passing on our heritage of service to those who will keep it alive in the decades ahead. One of the major strengths of Kiwanis since the beginning is their support of service leadership programs. Kiwanis International is the only organization with service-based programs for all age levels of students in schools and beyond. The first of these groups to be formed was Key Club in 1925 in Sacramento, California. Key Club is the largest high school organization in existence. Other clubs are K-Kids for elementary students and Builders Club for junior high or middle school. Circle K International is a group for college students and Action Club allows adults with developmental disabilities to be involved with serving their communities. One of the most popular Kiwanis fundraising events has been the proverbial pancake feed. Kiwanis clubs across the district have funded thousands of projects over the years from pancake profits. Other popular fundraising events have been selling concessions or other goodies, golf tournaments, raffles, grocery grab, and traditional types of events that meet the interests of the club members and their communities. Steve Siemens served as the Kiwanis International President from 2005 to 2006. His successful career in Kiwanis has taken him to all corners of the world. From 1993 to 1996, he served as Chairman of the Worldwide Service Project Campaign to Eliminate IDD, or Iodine Deficiency Disorder. Serving on the Kiwanis International Board from 2000 to 2003 allowed Steve to be elected as Vice President in 2003-2004, thus leading him to the Presidency in 2005-2006. Steve has been a seminar leader at many international conventions, in addition to keynoting district conventions and mid-year conferences throughout Kiwanis International. Known as the People Builder, Steve is President of Siemens People Builders, and travels all across the U.S. and abroad, motivating and training people in a variety of settings. His passion, humor, and service are admired by many throughout the Kiwanis world. Steve's greatest accomplishment is his continued role as a leader who draws out the best in others, making them realize their passion and ability to serve is key. Steve says, Thank you for being the right key at the right time in the right organization doing the right things. The best is yet to come because you hold the key. A century of service and passion has been communicated in many ways, and the means of communication has changed significantly during the past 100 years. From the print-only methods of early years to the instantaneous and electronic methods of today, communication has significantly changed the face of Kiwanis. Although the communication methods have changed, the passion and desire to serve the organization and children continue to live on. On August 8, 1970, the Nebraska-Iowa District Foundation was created. 
The Nebraska-Iowa Foundation has long supported clubs in the district with grants that are provided twice a year. All clubs are encouraged to donate to the foundation at the beginning of the Kiwanis year. These resources are then distributed to clubs for assistance with projects. The foundation also has its own projects. A camp event called Camp OK or Camp Olympia Kiwanis has been sponsored by the foundation for more than 30 years. Camp OK is designed for 5th or 6th grade students that may be gifted who may not have the means or opportunity to attend a camp. This popular week-long event is supported by Kiwanis clubs throughout the district. Key Leader is a district event established in 2005. Sanctioned by Kiwanis International as the official leadership opportunity for high school students, it has evolved to a district-wide activity. Key Leader is for students who have the potential for leadership but need the guidance and the tools to break through their shell. This weekend camp has served hundreds of Nebraska-Iowa students since its inception. Having previously served many roles as a Kiwanian, Jane Erickson rose to international president in 2016-2017. Jane is thankful that a little man named Dean asked her in 1990, Do you like kids? Saying yes to that question changed the path of her life forever. She joined Kiwanis and began an incredible journey that would lead her all over the world. In her early years with Kiwanis, Jane served on the Kiwanis International Foundation Board, eventually becoming the first woman president of that group. She extended her service as a Kiwanis International Board Member from 2011 to 2018. She was the fourth representative from the Nebraska-Iowa District elected as the Kiwanis International President, serving in 2016-2017 as the 100th President of Kiwanis International. Transforming Kiwanis into a stronger, more viable organization that serves kids is a significant goal of Jane's. I pledge to use my skills, knowledge, professional and volunteer experiences, my contacts, and my positive attitude to inspire, involve, and invest as many people as possible, and ask that together we energize the dream so that every child is happy, healthy, safe, and loved. After all, our children are counting on us. Thank you.
It is my distinct pleasure to announce that Kiwanis International has vowed to eliminate maternal and neonatal tetanus from the face of the earth. For 100 years, the Nebraska-Iowa Kiwanis District has motivated thousands of people to commit through their passion, service, and dedication to the mission of Kiwanis to make life better for children and others across our land. Kiwanians, communities, and kids have come together to make a difference in the lives of others. We know that the future of Kiwanis lies in the commitment and passion of those to follow. Nebraska-Iowa Kiwanis has ignited a passion in people to serve for the past 100 years, and the need to continue this tradition is best said in the words of Dave Christensen. I think it's really important that we continue all the things that we're doing and all the community activities and youth activities that we promoted over the first 100 years. Let's get busy and start working on the next 100 years. I do, oh, excuse me, better take my mask off. Um, I do want to thank Ron Patch from the bottom of my heart for making this video. Um, I, as Lisa said, you're going to really love watching this video uh, on the website. So Ron, thank you very much. I would now like to invite you to join us again tomorrow morning at nine o'clock for the continuation of our virtual district convention. Thanks for joining us this evening and see you at nine o'clock tomorrow morning.